Welcome to the Under Contract Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching the YouTube channel again. We are on our 10th episode already. I can't believe it. Congrats. It's, it's gone by fast. Um, I have my good friend Sean Will here. Um, why don't we give this guy a round of applause? Let's go. <laughs> okay, so Sean, you brought me this badass yeah. uh, Red Dagger shirt here. So why don't you explain to the general public of the United States what Red Dagger is? Um, Red Dagger is my tattoo studio. Um, I have a business partner, Abel Sanchez. Um, yeah, we went in and opened it 10 years ago, so 2012. Wow. And, um, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. Just trying to make moves and um, trying to get it going. So where did you, um, like, how did you even come up with the idea of, like, man, I want to do tattoos? It is, I feel like it probably just started with, like, you just liked art and drawing and stuff, huh? Yeah, so I've always drawn. Like, I don't have, like, an age or anything that I uh, remember starting it, but my uncle was uh, an artist. My dad, he would draw and stuff like that, and... Um, yeah, so I just got into it and uh, loved it, and then, yeah, just started going with it. Yeah, my grandparents, my grandma on my mom's side, she has, we have, like, a bunch of paintings she did, and my grandma on my dad's side also, but, dude, like, zero of their talent came into, like, me. I yeah, can't, yeah. I'm a math, like, numbers person, Yeah. so, like, when I see your tattoos on your Instagram, it's, like, it, like, blows my mind. I don't even, it's, like, I don't even see how that's possible, what you do. Well, Man, everyone is an artist. Everyone has it in them. It's just like you're told whenever you get older that you're never going to go anywhere with it or you have to stop. You have to get a real job. So everyone draws and stuff as a kid and everyone, um, yeah, everyone's an artist. So I just put, I just started doing it and didn't stop. And once you put enough time into something, like you get good at it, you have no choice but to get good at it. So yes. I'm sure just like the real estate business or any anything that anyone's in, like, you just get good at it after hours and hours and hours uh, of practice. And, 100%. And, and, yeah. So. I, I think I tell the story all the time. I remember whenever I first got licensed, I was sitting in my first office meeting and I thought real estate was just selling houses and going to close. Like I didn't even know, you know, so we're sitting in an office meeting and these people are talking about appraisals and inspections and foundation work and like who has a good foundation i'm like what we have to deal with all that yeah what? so and much it, more that goes into it yeah it was like chinese yeah like what they were saying and then sure enough within a year i'm like chopping it up with them about the right. same stuff it's just crazy yeah man you just got to get familiar with what you do and um yeah tattooing wasn't something that i thought i was ever gonna do it wasn't something that i just got into um because i wanted to it was just more of I was into art and um, it just kind of fell into my lap. My dad is actually the reason why I tattoo. Um, I remember being in my room. I, w I was drawing f like forever and painting forever and just doing it for fun. It's just something that I did. It wasn't something that I was like, okay, I'm doing this. So later on I can open up a tattoo studio or be a tattooer or whatever. It's just something I enjoyed. And uh, I was chilling in my room drawing and my dad came in there and I was about to graduate high school, so I graduated a year early. I went to, like, a charter school oh, yeah. where you can, like, do two years in one or, or whatever. So uh, I was graduating, like, a year before all my friends were, and I was chilling in my room drawing, and my dad's like, hey, what are you going to do when you graduate? Like, do you have any plans? You know, the typical parent, like, what are you going to do? And um, I was like, I'm going to go to art school because he went to the Art Institute of Houston. He oh, has his gosh. culinary degree. My uncle went to the Art Institute of Houston. He has a, a design degree. He did like um, di like graphic, digital graphics and stuff. So they both graduated from there. So I just figured that that's what I was going to do. All of my friends' parents were like, hey, go to college, go to college to all their kids. So mm -hmm. I just assumed that that was the route that I was going to have to take. And um, he was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to art, the Art Institute. And he's like, no, you're not. Because my dad went, I think, when he was 30 in his 30s so he went late oh, you know? okay. like I watched my dad go to college kind of thing so uh same thing with my mom she did the same thing right so yeah he was like uh no you're not and I was like you know kind of caught off guard because that's like the opposite of what all my friends parents were telling them like no you're gonna go to college you're gonna do this and that so he was like no you're not like you're talented um you're good enough to you're smart enough to do it on your own you have a great work ethic like I've 
had a job since I was 12. Like, we didn't come from much. So, like, all my friends growing up in League City, like, all their parents pay for their stuff. So, I didn't have that route. So, like, I was doing odd end jobs and doing stuff that I can just make money to go hang out with my friends. Mm -hmm. Like, my brother and I lived in these apartment complexes. and um, Just you and him? Like, y'all moved out? No, 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 no. This was, like, with our parents. This is when we were young. But we lived in these apartment complexes, and um, we always did everything together. So one day he saw me with, like, this wagon, like, you know, the little red pool wagons or whatever. I was going around. The radio flyer. Yeah, exactly. I was going around and um, getting these little rocks. There was, like, rocks from this really nice house from down the road, and they're, like, crystallized or whatever. So I would clean them off real good and then fill the... uh, wagon up with uh water and when you put them in there they like shined and just looked cool or whatever so i would go around and sell them for a dollar around the apartment complex to just like kids and stuff like that even though you could go like right to the house down the street and get them they didn't realize that so i was just selling it sounds crazy saying this but i was selling rocks (laughs) slinging (laughs) rocks at a young age and um, we would get our old toys and have little mini garage sales and sell them to get new toys. So I was doing whatever I could to make a little bit of money to like hang out with whoever I could to kind of keep up with what everyone else was doing. So, um, so yeah, he pretty much told me to get back on what we were talking about. He pretty much told me like, you don't need to go to college if you want to. Now, if you like have a different job in mind that you need to go to college for it's understandable but like if this is the route you want to take you don't necessarily need it so um yeah I thought he was crazy at first but everything he's ever said has been right and worked out and um so I didn't go to college he he told me that day he's like you should look into tattooing and um at that time I was uneducated on it I was unfamiliar with it I did know did you have any no, uh, uh-uh. uh, actually, no, I did. Yeah, I did. I had my chest done. I got my like a little chest tattoo when I was seventeen. Nothing mm-hmm. crazy, just something small, like you know, just the typical get a tattoo because you can. Just kinda. because, exactly. So, um, yeah, he pretty much, uh, or he pretty much told me, "Hey, you should tattoo." And I was a little familiar with it just because uh, when I was ten years old, I think I was about ten years old one of his really good friends lived with us. My parents were divorced and um, he lived with us and he was a tattooer and he would tattoo my dad at the house. Like, so I thought that was super cool. Yeah. I grew up skateboarding and stuff. So I was like, Oh, this is like some rebellious long hair. They're like just chilling at the house tattooing. And uh, I thought it was cool, but I didn't necessarily think like, Oh, this is what I want to do. You know? Um, So I knew like, I knew it was cool and I was interested in it. And my dad had, like, tattoo magazines all over the house and stuff like that. So that was cool, too. But, like I said, it was nothing I was super interested in doing or thought that that was going to be my career path whatsoever. So when he told me, hey, you should look into tattooing, being uneducated on it, I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to do real art. Like, I don't want to do these little biker skull tattoos and stuff. Not that there's, like, anything wrong with that. It's just I was being bougie about it and wanted to do something better. So. He's like, nah, man, you could, you know, do the kind of art that you do and want to do and pursue just, you know, why don't you go up to his shop? The guy's name was Nathan. He's like, why don't you go up to Nate's shop and uh, just check it out and see what you think about that. So I ended up doing that, going up there and I ran into some artists that um, were doing this stuff, like opened my eyes to the kind of tattooing that I wanted to do and whatnot. And um, yeah, I hung out there every day after school and loved it and um yeah, just kind of fell in love with the whole aspect of being your own boss in a sense, because tattooers like, yeah, even if you don't own your own shop, you have a boss, but you have a lot more freedom than you do if you clock into a nine and five, nine to five and um, have someone kind of running your life. And like I said, I've worked since I was 12. I've had that kind of, you know, I worked at Kroger's, I worked at Paxson, I did all this stuff that it was cool because I made money, but I knew that it wasn't something I was going to do forever. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, after that, I just, that was it. After I saw what I w- could do, what it, like tattooing really was and, um, pretty much opened my mind to like, I could do whatever I want in my style kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. So like your style, like when I look at your style, mm-hmm. I see it as like, 
I mean, and I'm not a, I don't know that much about tattooing and styles and stuff, but like the, I see some people that do like just pretty plain stuff, like, um, like not a ton of shading and color, but then like you, like you come across to me as like more of an, it's like a, not, I wouldn't say a cartoon, but like a, like a CGI animated look, yeah. but with like way more detail. Like, yeah. so it's, I get asked all the time and I've been tattooing for 15 years. So whenever I was like, thought it was super cool to say, like when people say, what's your style, I'll try to come up with some cool thing to say. But honestly, it's just like exaggerated realism, like illustrative stuff. Um, I don't even know what it's called. Like I'll look at a real picture and I'll exaggerate it and kind of do my own thing. It's not, it has like, um, it has like a realistic influence or right. look to it, but just it's, brighter color. It's also cartoony. So everything's just exaggerated, bumped up. Yeah. You did one of a shark. That was the sickest. I was like, I just looked at that, that one. And then the one with auto rocket with the yeah. air, the air maxes, yeah, on. the air maxes. So yeah. that's become like a thing is people just giving me random objects to put shoes on. And obviously I love shoes. So it's, it's a perfect kind of mash up for my style and what I like to do and keeps things interesting. But yeah, I don't have like a specific way to describe it besides just illustrative realism, you know, exaggerated, exaggerated realism is like the best thing to describe it. Yeah. So when you first started, like whenever you went up to that shop and you were kind of getting like your feet wet with like hanging around the tattoo artists and stuff, when was like the first time you picked up an actual needle and, and did anything? So I did it right away. So the thing about me is like, if I get into something or interested in something, it's like that for me. Like I just go at it. I, I, there is no chill for me. So, um, I think maybe the, uh, uh, it wouldn't be more than a week into going up there. I knew another guy there, which I won't say his name. He's awesome. I love him, but I don't know if he wants me to say this, but he gave me some needles and, um, my buddy and I made like a homemade machine, um, with like a spoon and a bunch of wild stuff. It was ridiculous. Prison style. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we made that and, um, I started tattooing my buddy that helped me make the machine. And, um, eventually I would say like a week into that. So going to that school that I went to, it was a charter school. So there was like some, there was good kids and there was bad kids. I mean, that's every school, right? Yeah. So, um, there was kids that just didn't care at all. And they're like, Hey, after school, I'm coming over, you know, whatever, you know? So I would tattoo him in my room and, um, I think, maybe a week into it, I was like, all right, let's get on eBay and get like a real machine and see what we can do. And so, um, I ordered a real machine. It came with a kit. So it came with ink needles, the machines, and it came with like a, a disc, like a CD that you could watch how to tattoo, you know, so <laughs> how to tattoo for dummies. <laughs> exactly. So we put that in. And as soon as I watched it, I was hyped. And I'm like, let's go. And I tattooed my friend and my dad came home that day. And, uh, he walked in the room and he was like, dang, okay. Like you're not playing like this yeah. is what you really want to do. And I was like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to give it my all and I don't want to waste any time. So yeah. 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 I could tell you're that type by your YouTube channel. I saw your first video and it was like better than mine. I'm like, man, this dude is coming in hot with this, man. That has a lot to do with my, uh, homie Sergio. He's a phenomenal videographer and, uh, photographer and he's, um, an artist as well. But we worked together a long time ago. Um, I did an art show, the Houston um, hip hop art show. And um, he would come over and take photos and do videos and stuff for me. And he's just so good. So that had a lot to do with him. It's cool, like sitting down and kind of putting our brains together and getting it going. But yeah, that's the thing is I look up to a lot of people on YouTube as far as inspiration and stuff like that. And they're doing crazy stuff. They've been in it for years, but mm -hmm. I'm like, it's not impossible for me to try to get close to that whatsoever. So might as well. Yeah. And and like, if you watch from like your first YouTube video, wait till five years from now. Right. Like if you go back and look at my channel, like my first, I think it was like, the reason I started was because COVID happened and we weren't really like allowed to do much. So I was like, this is the, I can do this from home and market myself right and the videos were bad bro it yeah. was like just on the phone with no mic like right. echoey audio and slowly over time i added like music in the back and mm -hmm. different transitions and i bought an actual camera so it's just it's funny to go back and look and see what i thought was like cool and 
Um, that's and, how it goes though. You got to start somewhere. And I think that it's better to do that than to sit and wait till something's perfect. Cause I mean, that was my thing. I wanted to do the YouTube channel for a while now. And, um, I would always just procrastinate, put it off. Like, yeah. I don't have this. I don't have that, whatever. And I just finally was like, I'm just going to buy a camera. Once you have the camera, there's no excuse. And, um, it's like, yeah, I want to do it right, but there is no better time than now. If I keep saying, oh, I'll do it when this happens or when this, if you do anything like that in life, then you're never going to get to where you want to be or start what you want to Got to get start. uncomfortable so, being uncomfortable. Exactly. I have people all the time tell me like, I love your videos. I just, I can't do that. I'm like, can, you though. can do that. Yeah. That's it, the same thing with tattooing. Everyone's like, I wish I, I was an artist or I wish I could do that. I'm like, I swear you, you can. Like I could do whatever you're doing if I put enough time into it. It's just doing it. The only reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because I've done it and focused on it for so long. So like, I don't think anything's impossible unless you have that mindset. Then of course it's going to be because that's where you're starting off. Yeah. Thinking already. So yeah, the YouTube stuff's fun, man. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like I said, it's something I wanted to do for a while. And honestly, it's not even about me. I wanted to do it for the shop and, you know, opening the new studio and um, just everything we have going on with that. I just thought it it was a perfect time to just get it going and kind of let people be a part of the new shop and kind of view the inside of it. And a lot of people don't, that don't come to the shop, don't know how it is or how we are and our vibe and all that. So maybe if you go to my YouTube channel and you watch one episode or whatever it'll make you feel more comfortable that hey these dudes are just normal you can come in and it's like a big family so I just kind of wanted to put that out there and promote the shop more than anything about me honestly like I enjoy it it was weird getting in front of a camera talking to yourself in a parking lot of H-E-B because you don't <laughs> want to do it in front of your friends and family and stuff at first so um, I feel like I'm I mean I know I'm going to get better at it obviously I've only put out two and it's a learning experience for sure. Um, I'm having fun with it. So that's like the most important part for sure. Dude, you have the thumbnail game dialed. That's also my, my homie, Serge. Yeah, yeah, he's good at that. We just we just um, bounce ideas off each other's heads and like uh, coming up with what we're going to name it and whatnot. And we were sitting there at his house, or, yeah, his house the other day in his little studio. And the thumbnail was like, it was my second uh, video. And I, we're like, what are we going to do? Like, there's something missing on it. Like, it's good, but there's something missing. And he just did like one little like negative, made one little strip across the thing lighter than the rest of it. And we're like, dude, that's it. Yeah. And we just get hyped on. It's just little stuff like that. So having fun with it, I think, is a huge reason why um, I, people enjoy it. I think people can see that we're having fun with it and that um, it makes them I don't know. It makes them feel like they they know you. Right. You know, if someone like for me, if and or you, you know, Sean does tattoos, okay. But then if they sit down and watch a video and it's your face and you're talking to the person and you're taking them through your shop, then like they, it's almost like you're personally walking them through the shop. Exactly. They feel like they've been there already. I mean, how many people do we follow on Instagram that you don't know but you feel like you do? You've seen their kids. You've seen their family. You've seen what they do. So. If you see them in person, you om- it's already almost like y'all are friends. Yes. It's such a weird time that we're in, but it's awesome. Like, I, r- I really enjoy it because it's it gives people access to you that they normally wouldn't have. So they're already feeling comfortable. Yeah, it, that is, we are in weird times in that respect where, say, I mean, dude, there's people that I'm friends with on Facebook that I you know, became friends with in 2009, 10. Right. And then it's like been eight, nine, 10, 11 years. And you see them somewhere and it's like, Hey, I haven't talked to you at all in yeah. 10 years, but I know everything exactly about your what life. You're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a cool thing too. There's people that I'm like, I can already tell like, Oh, we would get along just like you and Grayson said on your last podcast, it's all glorified. Like no one really puts the bad, you know, some people do, which I respect. They put their whole life on there, but everything's like glorified but you can tell if you'll get along with someone or not or um if if y'all would mesh or vibe together just off of their stories so yeah. it's crazy yeah there's people on instagram that i'm like i would like to meet you just because i know that we we think a lot alike like we just have a good time together yeah yeah that's I, the the real estate world on instagram is like half pretty good like content and like if i'm following a you know, I don't really follow too many like other realtors, but mm-hmm. like any real estate page, I want to see, I don't want to see like 
I feel like people get on like a social media kick and they're like, okay, I'm going to post three times a day, no matter what. For me, it's like, I've tried that and I'm like, what do I post? I'm not going to post another picture of like interest rates. Like no one, like, yeah, people care whenever they go to buy a house, but they're not going to sit there and read stuff like that. And like catching people's attention spans is getting harder and harder as you know. Right. So it is, I think Instagram, I think social media is a perspective. It's, it's how you view it. It's a tool. So in that regard, like I love it obviously. And I'm sure same for you, like it, your business doesn't can do nothing but grow right. if you do it right. And I think that if posting three times a day, isn't like your thing, then don't do it. Like if it's becoming more uh, or less organic than it should, then don't do it. But I think that putting effort into it is important too. So yeah, like with TikTok, like I don't want to post four TikToks a day, but if it's going to help my business, then I'll try to. Yeah. And also it gets me out of my comfort zone and gets my creativity flowing and, and whatnot. Now I'm not, I don't post four times a day. I don't post four times a week right now. Um, I, I need to, I definitely need to, but yeah, if you use it as a tool, and um, have that perspective on it. It's a beautiful thing. And there's other cool stuff about it. It's also toxic in some ways, but it's just all how you view it. I mean, everything has the good and bad. So it's definitely just perspective. Yeah, it's a great tool. It's free. Um, I owe a lot of how my business has grown to it. But on the flip side of that coin is like, go to your Instagram explore page and just start swiping. Dude, it's just filler. Oh, yeah. It's like just like filler content. It's yeah. like nothing. Like, yeah, like, no, it'll get you lost. Like I said, there's toxic things about it for sure. And um it's just how you use it. If you post in ghost, that's probably the best the best way you can uh go about it is just using it as a tool for business and then getting out of there and doing your thing. Yeah. And you'd be TikTok is good for tattooing because people would watch tat like tattoo TikToks of like actual tattooing all day. I feel like Man, you would think though, but I do see some tattooers popping off on there, but it's mostly, dude, you got to get on there and dance, dude. Like I, I've been posting videos of, uh, my tattoos and no one cares. I get on there and start doing the stanky leg and stuff starts popping. (laughs) So it's really, I don't know what it is, dude. I think though, if you do it enough, like if I'm on there enough posting tattoos, I mean, I'm new to it. It's just something I just started. So like I said, like I posted like four tattoos on it and people are like, oh, that's cool. And then I posted a little clip of me dancing and it went crazy. So it's just, uh, it's just the world we live in. Yeah. Dude. And yeah, it's like I said. And I think people love what, like seeing your actual personality. Exactly. That's a huge thing. Cause I love seeing other people's personalities. Like tattoos are cool. I've seen a million of them though. I want to see who's doing that tattoo and what, what you're like. And in any regard, like real estate, whatever, it's just, you want to see the person behind, um, whatever they do. So I definitely think that showing my personality more, I used to use my Instagram as just a portfolio. Like you just saw, I remember that. Like when I first ever followed you, it was only tattoos. Yeah, You never saw my face. It was nothing. And then whenever I started posting myself more and my family more and, uh, just my day-to-day life or whatever, I think my Instagram grew tremendously from just like them being able to see, I would get DMS all the time. Like we love seeing your personality, love seeing, um, you know, who's behind the artist more. And it was something I was always like, I'm just going to let my work speak for itself, which I think is still something you should do, but definitely, um, showing people what you're about is important. I can't hurt. It It can only add to it unless you, you suck. And then, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, man, if you're just a good person and, uh, just organically be yourself, you know, even like the world we live in right now is crazy on the whole, like everyone feels like they have to agree with everything, um, to be friends and stuff like that. And that's crazy to me, but even people I don't necessarily agree with or whatever, I still like seeing who they are. And like, I love someone being like just themselves, me too, like unapologetically themselves. And even if I don't agree with it, I'm like, I like that. I respect that. So I think that's important these days because people put up a cover real quick just to uh, appease someone. Or Yeah. Yes. And speaking of your family, I just want to clear the air about something. So Taylor was pissed. <laughs> she that... wasn't pissed. <laughs> She's just petty, bro. <laughs> so for those of you that didn't catch the last podcast, I said, uh, you know, Grayson did y'all's backyard. Yeah. 
And I said, yeah, just like you, when you did Sean's backyard, I was talking about how I loved what he did with the concrete and stuff. So let me correct myself. Sean and Taylor's backyard. Taylor, yeah. I'm I was, sorry. I was downstairs <laughs> watching that and I just heard her upstairs. She was with Tatum and she was like, just your backyard, huh? <laughs> She's totally playing. She's just messing with y'all. I she, know, that's I know. her personality. She loves giving people a hard time, but yeah, that's her backyard too. Just in case y'all are wondering. Yeah. It's definitely her backyard. Yeah, man. It's already been like a little over two years. Since yeah, y'all moved since in, huh? the house. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Time goes by quick. Yeah. Um, so where can everybody find you on social media? Um, Sean Will, at Sean Will for Instagram. Um, S-H-A-W. S-H-A-W-N. I don't know how anyone spells it. S-E-A-N. Seems crazy to me. My whole <laughs> life I was told to sound stuff out and then people threw scene in there. So S-H-A-W-N, Will, W-I-L-L. Um our shop Instagram is red dagger dot tattoo. And um, my YouTube channel is just Sean will. So yeah, just search Sean will yep. on YouTube, Sean will tattoo or anything else. I think just Sean will Sean will tattoo pulls up like some old tattoo videos. Y'all probably don't want to watch from a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, I tried to dial it in just to Sean will. It, it was weird at first because I think whenever I did it, I did it like as my email. So you had to type in some other stuff, but I think once it starts getting some traction, it pops up. So I think just Sean will, you could type it in and figure it out. Okay, cool. And while I'm thinking about it, I actually have one more question that I've actually been wondering. So, um, like say if I came to you and wanted a tattoo Mm -hmm. and I describe what I want and it's like something that doesn't really match your style. Can you, how flexible are you like with that? It depends. So, um, I do a lot of stuff that isn't like, I don't post on my Instagram because obviously I'm trying to target like a specific audience on stuff that I want to do, but I do a lot of stuff outside of the box too. Now, if it's like a portrait or a family portrait or something like that, I'm not going to do it. Doesn't Abel do those? Abel does. He does them in his style. Yeah. He's a beast. dude. Um, He has some good stuff. He does. Aaron Springs. He's phenomenal with portraits. So I would recommend just some of the homies or some people that we know that would do the best job in that. Yeah. And just refer it out. Right. So we're, that's the good thing about our shop is we're definitely not going to just take your money and and throw something on you. Like even if it's not our shop doing it, we'll refer someone that we know to do it. So depending on what it is, like I can go outside my box. I can do a lot of stuff. I have fun with a lot of stuff. That's really what it is. If I'm going to have fun with it, I'm going to do it. And if I could do justice and do the best job I can I'm going to do it but if it's something outside of my realm that I haven't spent 15 years focusing on like a, a family portrait I'm not going to tattoo your mom on you and it look like Beetlejuice like, <laughs> I'm not going to do that to someone so yeah uh, yeah I do a lot of stuff that I don't post or a lot of people don't see but it just depends on what it is yeah so like whenever like that shark I was talking about which, which shark are you talking about man I can't I'm it's probably like, a long time ago, but okay. it was, I think it was on a guy's forearm uh-huh. and it was Had the blood coming. Yes, out of it? Okay. yes, yes, yes. So did you draw that out first on like paper and then, yeah, well, I drew it on an iPad. So now everyone pretty much draws on the iPads, oh, iPad okay. pros. Yeah. So typically what I do is I have them send pictures of the body part that they're getting tattooed or want tattooed and reference images or whatever and so that one was on his forearm and you just put the forearm into procreate the app on your um, ipad and then you draw the shark to fit that forearm perfectly so when he comes in it's just copy and paste kind of deal so you already pretty much have it done like there's not a lot of you're not it's not like you're sitting there freestyling a tattoo no 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 not at all so i personally i even like to get my color theory down not so much anymore because I, I have a better idea of exactly what i'm going to do but if i do have time to sit there and color out the tattoo on the ipad um before the tattoo i will that way it's just one less factor in the equation i can just go through the tattoo and do a good job on the tattoo and not have to sit there and waste any energy on what color am i using or whatever unless they come in they have a specific color theory that they were thinking or their favorite color is purple so they want to put it in there but I can figure it out from there pretty much. So how many tattoos do you do a week? I do one a day. So and every I day, work every day. Well, I work Monday through Friday. I have weekends off, um, which is something new. I think I've only been doing that for like six months. You put your time in though, bro. 15 years. Well, I never thought that I would do that, but Abel, my business partner, he stressed to me how good he felt 
taking weekends off and really giving that time to his family and himself. And, um, so I just did it, especially once I had my daughter, I was like, okay, I'm going to take weekends off so I could be here for her. And if I do do a, a thing where if they do want a Saturday or something, I just charge them more. And, um, it's just kind of like, if you're going to take my time away from my family, it comes at a price. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm doing that, hoping that they don't do it. But some people are like, yeah, I want to get in, you know? So, um, Monday through Friday, I do one tattoo a day just because I did the whole multiple tattoos a day, um, before and something in my life was like lacking, you know, you put six hours in a tattoo and then you have to go home and draw six hours for your next tattoo. And then now I have to be a husband and a father and, um, I had to take time out for myself. So something in there is lacking if, if you, if you don't manage your time. So time management, is like something I've really focused on lately and getting in there doing four hours a day, going home, tattooing for four hours, um, spending time with my daughter, Taylor, you know, m- my time, mm-hmm. which is in the morning. I, I have to get up before it while everyone's sleeping and do me. Dude wakes up at one in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, not anymore. I used to wake up at four 30, but with the new shop, it's just not, not happening right now. Yeah. I remember I would text you at like seven 30, eight o'clock at night. You're like, Hey, I'm, I'm about to lay down and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? everyone thought that was crazy. I go to bed at seven 30. Well, I lay down at seven 30 and try to fall asleep by eight. Yeah. The sun was still up. I'd have those, the old people like little buys are on. I was like getting my little lavender smell on trying to do anything to go to sleep. But I haven't done that in a while. I have I wake up around like five 45, six now, just cause I just know with the new shop that I'm going to have to be there later. I'm not going to be able to go to bed at seven 30. Right. Um, so I'm just going to have to figure something out as far as waking up at six, going for a little run or doing something and then being able to manage the shop as well. So things have changed a little bit, but is what it is. Changing winds, man. You know, when you're a young single man, like, you know, when I was, you know, a couple of years ago, single, just selling real estate, it was like, I could just work all the time right? because I didn't have anybody to like think about or consider or, um, and I don't have kids or anything yet, but I could definitely see how it's wild, dude. You got a little girl looking at you like, yeah, you're like, Oh my God, like, it, I don't want to let this pass by and just not yeah, man, appreciate that's, it. That's a huge thing is just seeing her grow so fast and you don't want to miss that. And, um, you know, my parents had to work a lot and, you know, my dad was still, my parents were still there. Um, definitely for us, but I just don't want to like watch that go by. Like they're only so small for so long. And, um, fortunately I have a job where I can dictate my schedule and I can make time for my family. So I'll take advantage of that and, um, yeah, use it to my advantage for sure. The number one thing I hear people say, I've, I watched YouTube videos the other night of like millionaires and people say like, what's the one thing you would have done different? And, not all of them, but a lot of them. And these people are worth like F you money, like, yeah. like millions and millions, 10 plus million at least. Yeah. And, uh, they all said they wish they would have spent more time with their kids. Of course, man. That's yeah. I, I, I totally understand that. And before Taylor and, uh, Tatum came into my life, there's not one person that could stop me from working. Like my dad would tell me slow down. And it wasn't because I, I don't know why it was. I just have that in me. I just, I love what I do. I love, um, growing and just trying to be better. And, um, and I, you know, Abel and I want the business to be the best it can. So there's not one person that could, if, if I had a girlfriend or anything that was like, Hey, you work too much. And I'm sorry. Like, Deal with it. <laughs> it just is what it is. And I understand it. It's not like I'm sitting here telling them like, Oh, well you just, you don't get it. No, I, I get it. Like I totally understand where you're coming from, but that's just not me. So I, uh, until Taylor and Tatum came into my life, I was definitely going a hundred miles an hour. I still do. Don't get me wrong. I just, like I said, time management is, back. yeah. Time management is just so important. It's something that I've learned over the last couple of years. I'm really trying to dial in on that. I had the, so this title company right here, great American, my girlfriend works there and I had the owner on the podcast, Ronnie uh-huh. Matthews. And at, towards the end of the podcast, he was, I mean, just what he's done is impressive. Like the efficiency and like the machine they built to sell real estate, selling a thousand homes a year and stuff. Is that the guy I said, it sounded like you were talking to yourself? My future self. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. But, um, he was like, 
yeah, I don't know. I just, I have to do this. And I was like, you have to. He's like, it's just in me. I have to. Yeah, man. And I think, honestly, like, you're either born with that or you're not. And, like, you know, I, I, I had it good growing up. Like, I, I didn't hurt for anything. I, we weren't, like, over the top, like, wealthy or anything. Right. But I was fine. Right. And sometimes I almost wish that I had, like, had it a little rougher or something. So right. it could put that, like, dog attitude, which... I try to manifest that now and try to always be hungry, but I feel like it comes natural to people who just didn't have that, like growing up, they didn't have all the advantages and it was just like, they knew I got to do this if I want to get that. Yeah. You have no other choice. Yes. No, I totally get that. Now I didn't, I didn't have it bad by any means. Like I got everything that I needed. Um, my dad worked super hard to give us a good life and um so i was we weren't like poor by any means but definitely he instilled work ethic in into me and my brother so that's something that just came naturally i think just watching him work so hard and um i just don't see it any other way i don't have it in me to just chill i don't either like even when covid was going on or i don't can you say that on here (laughs) Um, (laughs) we don't want to get pulled from youtube right But whenever the C word was going on um, and we had to chill for a while, like I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was like, I had to figure something out. I had to do something. I had to like, yeah, it just wasn't working for me. So it's not even like something that I'm, I'm out here trying to be like, I want to do this because I'm trying to prove something. It's like, it just is. I enjoy being busy, staying busy. busy. Yeah. I love it. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, we're almost 40 minutes in anything you want to sprinkle on top of this podcast um nah man uh we're opening a new location um red dagger tattoo is opening um a walk-in shop off fairmont and beltway eight so for 10 years we've been like a private studio appointment only appointment only and um i guess like our biggest complaint which wasn't really a complaint but um was just our schedules like you know everyone being booked up you're booked out pretty far exactly so what we're doing now is we're going to um, have a few walk-in artists to kind of accommodate that situation. We're going to be doing piercings now and um, we'll have uh, laser tattoo removal. So Taylor will be the laser tech there. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, it's going to be awesome, man. We, uh, you know, the whole situation where it was like five months of trying to find a spot and getting that, that location that we had and then it falling through. And so we finally got a good spot. Um, in a good location and yeah man we're just excited to bring the walk inside to the tattoo studio to red dagger and um yeah man it's gonna be cool dude and living so close to work is gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. i'm that is one thing i miss about living in pasadena i used to live two minutes from the office uh-huh. now i'm 22 minutes from the office right and I, i'm used to it now but at first i was like man did i just mess up did i should i have moved out here but I, i'm used to it now and but you know there's times where you know, say for example, it's two o'clock and I have a four o'clock appointment and I don't have anything going on between two and four. I'm not going to drive almost 30 minutes back home, sit here for 30 minutes and then drive back. So I just have to like kind of kill time up there. Yeah, man. We're driving downtown every day now, which we lived downtown when we had the spot. So, um, the location we're in now, so it made sense. But now that we're, we all live on this side closer to the new shop, we're just ready to get in there, man, and get this new shop going and driving down the road. Are y'all keeping the old shop or moving No, it? we thought about it. We, we, we're we in discussion of, like, if that was something we are going to do, but it just doesn't make sense. Um, the spot we have now is, like, a little over twice as big as the, lo- the spot we're in now, so it just makes sense to move everything over there and kind of, we don't want to drive downtown anymore. We don't want to have to worry about what's going on there and managing that one. And what we have going on with this new one is going to be so much uh, going on. We, we just have to be there and really focus on that. And we got, we have our hands full with this one. Cool. Cool, man. Well, thank you for doing I this. You, it was bro. fun. Of course, um, man. we'll have this baby up tonight. And I just want to say thank you to the YouTube subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to uh, the YouTube channel, please hit the like and subscribe. Go to Sean Will's YouTube yes, channel. Sir. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell notification. So you never yeah, miss a video yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we will talk to you later. I right, appreciate you, man.